and uh, it's time to go to Calgary. Let's talk to Mick Ozzy. Hello, Mick. Hey, Jeff. Long time no talk. I hear you back from, uh, well, my part of the world, the west coast, the wild, wild west of North America, eh? The weather was beautiful. Sorry I didn't drop in. I, I went past your place. The light wasn't on. So I, uh, I <laughs> no, you, I heard you out in Portland and Seattle, but, uh, yeah, lots happening over here as well. And to all those uh, Aussie football people that are in, uh, you know, in repression and upset that the footy season's over well it's not over over here and it's going to be over uh, next week as we head down to colorado springs for the u.s nationals of aussie rules footy which is a big event and uh, i'm looking forward to it now we're going to get to that in a second but of course we've just had the sanfl grand final here and you're from uh from galway aren't you Mick? oh yeah no i read that uh, the bulldogs won seven out of nine premierships not that they won before the crows were in but no i've got good <laughs> friends down there at Bulldogs, uh, the under 19s coach Jeff Brown's my mate. Uh, Craig Histon's out there helping the kids. So, yeah, know a lot of good people out that way. And uh, yeah, South Gawler has suffered a little bit in the Brosser Valley because so many of the young kids there are down at Central District, which is uh, great to see. And congratulations on beating the Glenelg girls. There you go, mate. Now, how long have you been in Canada? Oh, ten and a half years, mate. Got here in March '98, so. Yeah, it's good to listen to uh, little Anne Marie there. She was pretty intense, but it's good to listen to an Aussie accent as well. Mate, I, and I think I've mentioned this before, but you've been there for ten and a half years. Look, pe people uh, read about the U.S. and pick up an accent. You know, people come back after you know spending a, going to the U.S. on holidays and come back with an accent. You've been there for ten and a half years. You sound like, more like Steve Irwin <laughs> than anyone I've ever met. You know, the funny thing is though, there's a couple of sayings that. If I come back home, I'm just going to get mates are going to hit me like washroom. I think I've told you that before. Like, you know, like, it's so polite. Go to the washroom like it's the toilet. You can't even <laughs> say toilet over here. That's right. And everyone says you're welcome. Like, so, yeah, it's pretty polite, but uh, Canadians say hey all the time, and I've kind of picked that up. I think I had that before I left, actually. Right, OK. Well, the U.S. Nationals of Aussie Rules Football. Tell me about that. Oh, wow, it's huge. It's called the U.S. Nationals, and like I've said before, there's like 50 teams all over the U.S., and four years ago, I was out there in Vancouver, and uh, the boys there had a little bit of a problem with the east of Canada, so uh, they decided to apply, and they got in, and I went to Milwaukee and played in the first ever Canadian team to play in the U.S. Nationals, and then the last two years, I played for Calgary, so I helped get Calgary Kangaroos in, and we played in Vegas, and then last year in Louisville, and again, so uh, we're in Division 2, Vancouver have been up from Division 2 into Division 1. So there's two Canadian teams that have a real good chance at winning down there in uh, Colorado Springs, it is, uh, starting Saturday and Sunday. So we play three games, and basically if you win three, you get through to the final. Right. And uh, I'll just mention some of the guests the AFL have sent over. Robert Diffier Domenico, really? I was lucky enough to interview him in Vegas with uh, Peter Swab, the other former Hawthorne guy. And then uh, last year was Kevin Sheedy, of course, and Stephen Silvani. Uh, a couple of years before that, Andrew Bogart, the number one draft pick for the Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA, he was there. And this year they're sending uh, Bomber Thompson, the, obviously the former Eston Gray and Geelong Cat coach. So the AFL sent some guests over. And imagine the ex-Pat Aussies love it when they get to chat to these guys, oh, the guys yeah. that come. They just love being here. That's awesome. Now, what sort of crowd does it pull? Ah, uh, pretty good. The thing is, like, uh, I enjoyed Louisville, which is in Kentucky. I enjoyed that more than Las Vegas. Did you imagine Vegas? Like, everything's going on there. They didn't care about us. Yeah. Whereas Louisville, we got great media publicity. There was even people rolled up there that heard uh, some radio work I did and some of the TV that the Louisville people did. And in Colorado Springs, they've had ABC TV cover it like six months ago. So it's better when we're in smaller cities that really welcome us. And, you know, there's, there's close on a 1,000 players going to be playing uh, this weekend. Uh, four divisions, and there's a girls' division as well. So it's a big event, three or four fields going at once. They get Griller over from Perth. He's the radio guy. He comes over every year and does live commentary. So... It's a lot of fun, and there you go, South Australia, Coopers, the beer is the sponsors, so some good South Aussie content as well. That's terrific. 
Now, if we saw this on the football set, let's say we could catch it on the cable or what have you, what would, like, what sort of standard is it? Um, you know, Division compared 1's pretty to, good. Yeah. Division, Division 1 is, uh, oh, it's hard to say, like, you've got to have half Americans or half Canadians, so it's very strict, there's only, you have to have nine on the field at once, right. so... You know, you can, our Canadian talent's not as good this year because we've lost three or four key guys. We're, but we have 12 to 13 very good Aussies, and probably 10 of those would play A-grade football in the country. And like I've mentioned before, Brad Flower, Robert Flower's kid, he's playing for us. He's probably going to be the best player in the whole competition. Mm -hmm. So we've got a good chance. We've got to look after our Canadian boys. They have to be on the field all the time. And it's really strict. No, it's Pat. Like, I've been here 10 years. I don't qualify as a Canadian. So it's very strict that you, you know, even if you lived overseas for a while, you not, you cannot qualify as a Canadian or a US guy. Okay. What sort of venue is it? Is it like country football where, you know, they drive your car up to the boundary and, you know, tooting your horn when someone gets a goal? Or is it actually, you know, <laughs> proper stadiums and what have you? <laughs> no, well, obviously because uh, we need three or four fields, it's just, this year it's in the U.S. It's the Army Barracks down there in Colorado. Uh, Louisville was in a really, just a huge field where they uh, block off three or four fields. You know, they have big cameras up and trucks there where Griller can get up and commentate. And, you know, it's all set up. So, yeah, it's really well done. Obviously, a lot of organisation goes into it. Is it gaining momentum? Or is it this weird little fringy thing on the side? You know? Oh, no, it's huge. I mentioned, I do uh, radio out there in Toronto. My mate from Montreal is really going big now on TV. And, you know, he has people that call him from the U.S. and want to talk about Aussie football. And my radio mate out there, he's a big betting guy. So he loves getting my tips, uh, which obviously come from my dad as well. Because, you know, I still follow the AFL, but I can't follow it as closely over here. So he loves getting my tips for his betting audience. But it's a real thrill for me when people call his radio show asking about Aussie Rules footy. The trouble is, so many Canadians think it's rugby, and I go, go no, it's not rugby. Like, it's nothing like rugby. So, yeah, it is growing huge, uh, but still, so much more work we can do, and there's, I don't know, big potential, obviously. Do people get it? Like, how hard is it to explain to, so let's say, your average Canadian, your average American, who sees a game, and you got to, and they go, What's that about? Like compared to uh, American football, which is really stop-start and structured, this is such a, you know, I mean, they, they call it aerial ping-pong, and, and compared to that, it probably seems like that. You know, the blokes just running all over the shop, it probably looks like organised chaos. How hard is it to explain <laughs> to someone, you know, seeing it for the very first time? Jeff, you're absolutely correct there. It is very hard to explain, and the only thing that I can somewhat say, I'd basically say, look, have you ever seen Gaelic football? It's somewhat similar to what the Irish play. Um, you know, you just basically start off and say how it's a fast running, forward moving, kicking game. But we saw the AFL Grand Final on the big screen here last week. We had a big party. One of my mates come along and he just thanked me next day for asking him because he couldn't believe how fit the guys were, how intense it was, the crowd at the MCG. He was just totally blown away, blown away with the whole game. So. Mm. And as I said before, the guys that start playing it here, they just love it. You know, we lose too many because it's a bit tough for some guys, but, you know, the guys that play it just love it. Okay. Now, of course, there's always the big football versus soccer, isn't it, in terms of who should own the word football. You know, here in Australia and America, they call football, you know, f world football soccer, you know what I'm saying. And um, whereas, you know, and, and we use football here for AFL. And, the, you know, by... Uh, I guess reasoning, your, your soccer, your football advocates who say soccer should be football, am I making sense, uh, is that it's a world game. Do you ever see the, see the day, Mick, and this could be a, a long way off in the future, where football is actually that big that we could own the word football and soccer would go back to being soccer everywhere? <laughs> I like that because I'm not a big soccer fan at all. I mean, I think soccer's a great game for girls, to be honest, you know, you get team camaraderie shit and they don't really get hurt but you know it's the Italians that give the soccer the bad name the way they fall over they should be in LA like they're, they're actors but yeah I mean you're right and football yeah they we they call it football in, in 
England, obviously, and uh, but they call NFL and CFL. They call that football, and there's no kicking. So I don't know why NFL call their game football. The only people that punt and kick the ball are, are the punters and kickers, and that they get dissed as if they're not part of the team in some way. So, yeah, football is AFL, and interesting, uh, AFL need to act on this because arena football is growing huge, and a lot of people consider AFL as arena football league, and that's that indoor NFL style game that they wear stupid helmets playing indoors and years ago I checked out the web the uh, domain name AFL.com and it was owned by some accountancy guy but you know AFL they need to get onto that because Arena Football is starting to steal that name mm, there we go good heads up uh, Mick Ozzy in Calgary thank you for your time this morning I'll catch up with you next week all right. And of course, there's a, you, thank you, mate. And there's a, a link to your website uh, as well. It's worth checking out from the Jeff Berzikop page at 5AA.com.au as well. Thank you, Mick. All right. See you later. Cheers, mate.